On this episode, I will go over the differences between using proxies and optimized media in your projects, and which one to consider in your workflow. This episode is part of a series that has to do with smoother playback and scrubbing while editing for working faster and more creatively. This episode does not cover the differences in quality between proxy and optimized media file types. That is covered in a subsequent episode. Let's begin by navigating to File, Project Settings, Master Settings, and focus on the section called Optimize Media and Render Cache. Here is where you will choose what file types will be created when you choose to generate either proxy or optimized media file types. This section is actually broken up into four subsections. The first is the proxy media section, which gives you options for resolution and quality. Next, you have the same options for optimized media. Then you have the render cache format. And lastly, you have the caching section, which controls manual caching parameters when the user mode is chosen for color and fusion caching. Both caching sections will be covered on a future episode. Before diving in, it's worth investing a little bit of time understanding why these file types exist and what they consist of intrinsically. Depending on your workflow, you may choose one over the other, or both in tandem. When you record video, your cell phone or prosumer camera encodes its video using interframe compression, which creates the smallest files ideal for streaming in either the H.264 or H.265 format as an MP4, MOV, or other file type. These encoded files employ inter-frame compression codecs that share image data between frames through techniques like motion compensation, which enhances compression efficiency. These video files consist of keyframes called initial frames or iframes that represent full images, followed by predicted frames or P frames and bidirectionally predicted frames, or B frames, that reference preceding and subsequent frames for efficient compression. However, the interdependence of frames within a group of picture structure, or GOP structure, poses challenges for smooth editing, as decoding both target and reference frames increases computational load and hinders real-time playback, impacting the editor's ability to assess changes effectively. While these intraframe encoded files are ideal for streaming, intraframe encoded files, like proxies and optimized media, are ideal for editing, and this is their greatest advantage. Generating either proxy or optimized media produces smoother playback results, but each reside differently in your computer and for different tasks. Let me talk about proxies first. Proxies are new transcoded duplicates of your highly compressed resolution files generated either in camera, by Resolve, or by a third party application. You will either create DNX HR proxies if you're on a PC, or ideally ProRes proxies if you're on a Mac. This type of file is much easier to edit because it requires less computation to display an image. Depending on the resolution and quality of the proxies you generate, they could be smaller or bigger than your originals. Unlike interframe compression, these files are encoded using intraframe compression, which interprets full images from pieces of images commonly found in H.264 and H.265 encoded files, consisting of I, P, and B frames. When you generate a proxy file, IPB frames are decoded, then transcoded into full frames using intraframe compression. The resulting file size and quality depend on the resolution of the proxy and the chosen compression settings, ranging from lower quality and smaller files to higher quality and larger files. This type of image structure is what makes it possible for computers with limited specs to edit playback, and scrub videos in real time because it minimizes the CPU having to interpret IPB frames into full frames. It's also a good solution for a timeline consisting of videos that have different frame rates that don't play back smoothly. As counterintuitive as it may seem, a large 50 gigabyte proxy 
can scrub and playback smoother than a 5 gigabyte compressed video file. For the record, H.264 also supports intraframe compression. I didn't mention this earlier to avoid confusion, but now that you know what intraframe compression is, it's worth mentioning. Most consumer based gear, like cell phones and entry level cameras, are encoding video files with interframe compression in order to save space. However, some high end cameras have the option to create an H.264 file with only intraframe compression, where the encoder encodes using iframes exclusively. This is what the XAVCSI format is on some cameras. Proxy files reside in your computer as a single file, located by navigating to File, Project Settings, Master Settings, then scroll down to Working Folders. They are located in the following path set by default, or a user-specific directory. The advantage of using proxies is that you will be able to scrub and edit a timeline smoothly with most linear effects applied, like brightness, contrast boost, or image rotation. However, this doesn't guarantee smooth playback with CPU intensive nonlinear effects like noise reduction or vector motion blur, unless these effects are cached. This is covered in a future episode. Proxies can also be a necessary option when working with editors across a local network or remote editors over the internet because of their potentially smaller file sizes. In this workflow, you can choose to send the editor low quality and therefore smaller proxies. One advantage of working with proxies in Resolve is that if you start a new project that uses the same original files as another project, you do not need to regenerate proxies. You can just relink the proxies already generated from a previous project by right clicking the source file in the media pool and selecting Relink Proxy Media. A dialog will open where you can navigate to the proxy folder mentioned previously, or to any location of your choice. A proxy workflow would be ideal for an editor working on a modest computer, or an editor working with RAW and 4K or higher resolution files, which tend to be large and computationally intensive. Creating proxies for these types of data-rich files allows for smoother editing, while preserving the ability to switch back to the high-resolution originals during color grading, finishing, and final rendering. It's also useful for working with video files of different frame rates on a single timeline by lessening the CPU workload interpreting IPB frames when scrubbing. Lastly, proxies are especially useful for editors that need to produce quick rough cuts or initial edits by working with lower-resolution files to make decisions on pacing, cuts, and overall structure before committing to the final high-resolution render. I will explain how to switch between proxies and originals in a moment. Because proxies can be generated with lower resolution and quality, images may contain soft edges and less color information than the originals. Therefore, low-resolution and low-quality proxies would not be ideal for VFX or professional color grading where keen and precise color is necessary, respectfully. For those workflows, you should use the original files or choose higher quality proxies with higher bit rates if your system struggles playing the originals. I go over proxy quality differences and bit rates in a future episode. To create a proxy file, just right click on your source file from any of several locations and select Generate Proxy Media. When done, the original file will be tagged with an icon labeled PXY, indicating that it is referencing proxy media. To turn on proxy usage, on the menu bar, select Playback, Proxy Handling, and choose Prefer Proxies. To disable or switch between proxies and the originals, follow the same steps, but select Disable All Proxies. Don't worry, the proxies are not deleted. Something to note about proxies is that if you cut a clip from a two-minute video file and wish to generate a proxy for just that clip, you're actually making a proxy of the two-minute video file, not the clip. This is important to know for those of you thinking you could just create proxy files for clips when you need them. Unfortunately, that's not how proxies work. 
That kind of workflow brings us to the next topic, optimized media. Optimized media is suitable for per-clip use. Think of it like a mini proxy, where you're just making a type of proxy for a clip only, and not the whole video file the clip belongs to, usually. In other words, unlike proxies, which are entire video files, optimized media can be generated from clips belonging to a source file or the entire source file itself. It can greatly improve playback of clips that will contain excessive use of linear effects and certain OFX plugins. These files use the same intra-frame compression as proxies, but are stored differently as a series of pictures and not as a single file. The reason for this is because optimized media as well as render cache are in the DaVinci cache clip format, which is validated on a per frame basis in order to be current with the changes made to clips when caching is turned on. This is also the format node and render caching utilizes. These files reside one folder up from the proxy folder in a folder called cache clip, then optimize media. However, these files reside transparently in your system and are not meant to be transferred to a remote editor or computer. As a quick note, due to this nature of file structure, you should consider using an SSD for storing these files when they are generated. For those interested, I have an episode on how to set up your system with multiple SSDs that explicitly addresses this workflow. Another advantage of optimized media that gets overlooked is that once the media is created, it is referenced automatically in different projects that reference those clips or files and do not need to be relinked as you do with proxies, as seen here. Take note, if you generate optimized media for a clip, then expand that clip. The section expanded is not optimized. You will need to have Resolve regenerate optimized media for the clip. A misconception when generating optimized media is that it optimizes playback of video with effects. That isn't exactly true. Optimized media improves the playback of clips before linear effects and OFX plugins are applied, while caching is responsible for smoother playback after the effects are applied. In other words, if the effect you apply causes a slowdown, regenerating optimized media doesn't directly improve the playback of the effect. However, that is a topic covered in a subsequent episode. In a workflow using optimized media, you are editing your original video footage but creating optimized media only on individual clips where your playback or scrubbing is lagging. In fact, optimized media workflows share the same reasons for their use as proxy media workflows. However, one big difference is that choosing this format can save a lot of time and space when electing to convert clips and not entire video files into more efficient media. Therefore, you are not consuming as much space unless you set the resolution and quality of optimized media to be higher than proxies for the same source files. Lastly, optimized media could be a convenient solution for an editor that needs different proxy qualities on the same timeline. In this workflow, you'd set your proxy settings differently than your optimized media settings in the project settings. In other words, you'd have a different resolution and quality setting for each. I will return to this later. One way to create optimized media is by right-clicking a clip on the timeline and selecting Generate Optimized Media from the context menu, or you can generate optimized media for whole video files as well. To have Resolve use optimized media, go to Playback and select Use Optimized Media if available, and a checkmark will appear. To disable or switch between optimized media and the originals, repeat the same steps to uncheck the option. Again, don't worry, this will not delete the optimized media. The last thing I want to mention before ending this episode is that you can use both proxies and optimized media in your workflow. But if you choose to use both, proxies will take precedence over optimized media, meaning Resolve will use proxies first. If you generate proxies and optimized media for clips belonging to the same files for which proxies were generated, Therefore, if you have a proxy generated for a file 
and decided you need optimized media for a clip from that file, you need to unlink the original file from the proxy and then generate optimized media for that clip or just turn off proxies temporarily. A case in which you'd want to do this would be if you were keen or color grading specific clips where you need a higher resolution and bit rate than the proxy. Then you would set your optimized media cache settings at a higher resolution and quality than the proxy settings in the project settings. Just don't forget to have Resolve use the optimized media. One more thing. If you need to work with the original files and want to bypass proxies, you don't have to unlink them. Rather, you can just have Resolve not use them temporarily by going to Playback, Proxy Handling, and select Disable All Proxies. To use them again, repeat the same steps and select Prefer Proxies. I don't like simplifying technical information to the point where it becomes overly generalized and loses its precision and depth. But for the sake of those that argue that both media types are essentially the same, there is some truth to that. However, from experience, I wouldn't agree that it's the same for all systems. Understanding the differences and the compression technology used in generating proxy and optimized media, from a non-strict hand-waving perspective, I will say this for those of you on the fence about these media types. If the settings of each file type match in the project settings, there is no discernible difference using either one if all you use are SSDs. This is because mechanical drives read sequential files less quickly than SSDs and there is a risk of the cache filling up before it dumps the data to the video card, potentially resulting in choppy playback. I hope this sits well with you. Although I provided you with the technical information about these formats from extensive research, which involved contacting Blackmagic Design and referencing the DaVinci Resolve manual, the best way to determine what's best for your workflow is to test both. For now, the information presented should serve as a stepping stone to further research and better understand proxies and optimized media. I covered what proxies and optimized media are, why they exist, how to generate them, where they are stored, and what workflows incorporate them. Additionally, I offered some technical information and comparisons about them. In the next episode, I will go over the distinctions between different resolutions and quality settings for proxy and optimized media file types. So as always, thank you for watching, and until next time, go capture that once-in-a-lifetime moment.